Welcome back to the channel by the way. It's been a while and I know I keep saying that at the start of most of my videos. I'm going to take these glasses off because they're rather annoying me. Keep sliding down my nose. They need some grips on them but they don't have it so I can manage without. I can almost see what's going on in the world. I've been agonizing over camera equipment recently. For those of you that saw the last videos you'll know that I had a Hasselblad X2D and three lenses with that. In fact, possibly even four, if I remember correctly. And um, I sold that on to MPB, having realized that it was tying up a lot of cash. It didn't give me significantly better images than I could get with my other cameras. And it also was very bulky and, as a result, heavy. And it was just becoming a chore, really, to sort of carry it around and use it. So... I had at the time that I had the Hasselblad this Olympus OM-1 and I've made videos about this one before and I find it difficult to put this camera down. It gives me incredible amounts of pleasure because I just find it fits well, it's intuitive to use, it produces in high res mode images which are pretty damn good really, all in all. The only criticism I've got of the high res mode is that if there's a movement in the shot, like trees are just moving slightly in the wind, unless the shutter speed's incredibly high, um, it will show that blur in the final result, which is a little bit annoying. But for anything that's static or definitely not moving or trees on a non-windy day, it produces very good images. Now, in a box, which I'll show you in a minute, I've got four other lenses from my Olympus range, which I'm sending to MPB tomorrow. Uh, there's a 100 to 400, which is just a beast. It's too big and it's too heavy and it doesn't fit the ethos of a micro four thirds camera. It's about the size of a 70 to 200 2.8 or 100 to 400 in normal sort of full frame terms. And that just for me doesn't work on a, a nice compact little body like this. Uh, there is also in there a 90mm macro um, OM system lens, not Mzukio, it's OM system. Same company, or at least it's a similar company, one took over the other, um, which was stunning, but it's a macro lens. I rarely do macro. I've done a bit recently because we've had some nice flowers, and I like, um, I like getting the odd flower on macro. I've also got, still, with my camera, this uh, Mzukio... 2.8 60mm lens, which is a very nice little lens. It's not a pro lens, but it is actually very compact. That's it, full size. That's not very big at all, really. It's about three and a half, maybe four inches long. And it's only the mount diameter in well, diameter. Obviously, it doesn't spread out further. It's quite light. It's very easy to put in your pocket as a sort of a, if I see something macro, I can put it on. And the other lens I've kept, and these are the only two lenses I'm keeping with my Olympus system, is this 100 uh, to 12, 12 to 100, image stabilized F4 lens, pro lens. I know it's not as wide as my 8 to 25 pro lens, and it doesn't go as far on the long end as my 40 to 150, but I value just having one lens on the camera. And if I can, if I'm in need of a wider angle, I can just stitch two images together. So the 8 to 25 doesn't give me an advantage there. If I want to go longer, I can use digital zoom, two times digital zoom built into the camera, which I understand isn't the same image quality as pure image straight from the lens. But it's good enough for a lot of things, a lot of situations where I'm just out casually and not planning, doing much at all, just have a camera with me and take pictures and just to have the convenience of having it with me, other than my smartphone. This worked really well. I'm so pleased with this. This one I've mentioned before, I've had converted to infrared. So it has in it at the moment this tiny little, if I just prise this out carefully, you see that tiny little filter that filter is a IR cut filter and what it does is it replaces the IR cut filter that all normal cameras have in them anyway in front of the sensor with this removable one. Now being removable and fiddly to get back in but you don't need to do it that often so I'm just concentrating when I do this before I break something. 
Um, it just fits in behind the lens like that. The lens keeps it in place. It's not going anywhere. It's got a small amount of padding, foam rubber padding around it to hold it in place. That acts as an effective shield to the sensor when I take lenses off. But in the event I want to take infrared pictures, I can replace that IR cut filter that I've just shown you with one of three actual um, particular nanometer filters, 720, 680, and 900 or 850, I think I've got. And that allows me to turn this perfectly normal camera, apart from the fact it's got the IR cut sensor removed from the sensor but replaced with this one that's in the camera body. Um, it, it means I can do much more with it. And I do value being able to take infrared pictures. And to be quite blunt, this camera body is really nice. It's not cost me a lot of money. It cost me about £300 to get the conversion done, and then the filters were about £90. But what I'm holding in my hand here to MPB, if I were to sell it to them tomorrow, there is about £750 of the camera. So for that money, I don't want to sell it. It just gives me so much that it's just pleasant to have. And along with this £250 um, macro lens, which is what that's worth to MPB, even though both of these are actually as new. I'm going to keep those and I'll use them on the little odd jobs and bits and pieces that I don't really want to get the bigger equipment out for. So the other camera I found and agonized over getting rid of is this Sony A7R5. And this has got two lenses, only got two lenses with it. It's got the 20 to 70 f4 zoom lens, which having read reports and seen um, results from uh, a chap called Chris Frost, who's, I follow a lot of his lens and camera reviews, a very frank and honest review. He rated this 20 to 70 f4 lens as one of the sharpest lenses he's ever tested, and that includes primes. And the other lens he also rated as one of the best lenses he's ever tested is this 70 to 200 f4, which is the G version. Both of these are G lenses, not even G Master, but they've, they've acquired scores for sharpness, contrast, detail, all of that sort of thing, way, way above some other lenses out there. So, and it's not particularly heavy, neither of them are heavy. So this is my full Sony gear, just these two lenses. I can go from... 20 mil right through to 200 and this lens takes the two times converter which I've also got but it's in the bag over there so I can go out to 400 if I really do need to go farther than that and if 20 millimeters isn't wide enough what I can do is just stitch a couple of shots together and I can achieve a wide angle effect that way so that is what I've got in terms of gear and I'm actually quite pleased with my result, my um, decision here. I've been agonizing over this for about two weeks and taking shot after shot out into the garden and checking the detail between the two of them. And I can actually get, with the Olympus in high res mode, handheld high res mode, at 50 megapixels, I can get an image which is close enough to the image this camera can give me at an equivalent focal length that this is a pleasure to have, as I've said, and keep, and I will be doing so. If high-res mode isn't going to work on the Olympus, and I need a single image that's capturing all of the movement in a shot, and it is a 62 megapixel, this comes into play. This is the camera to use for that. I take a lot of shots of Wally, who's over here woofing at something happening in the garden, but I take a lot of shots of my pets because I, I get very attached to them, and um, I like to have a good record of both video and stills of them during their, their time with us. So that's pretty much all I've got in the way of photographic equipment now. I've got four, effectively four lenses and two camera bodies. It seems bizarre I should have two camera systems, but... I can't decide between them. I really can't. So at the end of the day, I'll have both. And if at some point in the future I decide that one has a significant or enough of an advantage to warrant getting rid of the other, then I'll do that. Um, as technology goes on, these cameras change. Olympus have announced they're releasing the OM-1 
Mark II's firmware to go in the OM1 later this year. So I don't even need to upgrade the hardware, physical hardware of the camera. I can actually download that firmware when it becomes available and get the features that that's got, which is really quite good. So all in all, I've had a difficult, um, probably two or three weeks now, trying to work out which and how much of this gear to keep, but I'm really quite happy with my decision. It isn't what I was expecting. I was rather hoping that it would be clear cut that one system gave me enough of what I need in how I use a camera to actually replace the other one, but I've not been able to reach that decision, and I don't think I will. Um, this is the second or third Olympus camera I've had, and I've always got another one, as in when I've switched away, I've always gone back to it. And equally with Sony, this isn't my first A7R5, this is my second A7R5, because when I got rid of the last one, I found that I missed it. <laughs> so I've got two camera systems that I miss if I get rid of either, so I might as well keep both. On top of that, I've got my little DJI uh, Mini 4 Pro, which isn't getting used much at the moment at all because we're, the depths of winter and everything is wet or windy and it's just unpleasant to use half the time. I've also got this camera I'm recording you on, which is the Pocket DJI Pocket 3, which, again, is such a, a really nice piece of kit to use. It does exactly what it says on the label. Well, Wally, what do you want? What do you want? You want to go in the garden? I'll let you out. Yes, he does. He wants to go outside in the rain. Well, he's not going to because he'll paddle it in with him. I've also got these DJI microphones. One of them comes with a combo which um, has the extender, battery extender. I've got two battery extenders and I've got two microphones with it because the DJI Pocket 2 supports two remote Bluetooth microphones. So I've got that. So when I finally do get out into the field and start taking some pictures and doing some landscape photography again, which I hope isn't too far in the future, I'm kitted out with the minimum gear that I need to do the job. If I go out for a serious shoot, I'll take the Sony. And rather nicely, I can get all of this Sony equipment in this one, I think it's about a nine, eight litre pack, backpack thing. And the camera, the two lenses and bits and pieces and the vlogging gear all fit in there nicely, which is really pleasant. Um, or likewise, I can switch the Olympus and the one lens I have with that into there. Anyway, um, that's a little bit of a gear update from my point of view. Uh, I hope you found that interesting. <laughs> it might not be very interesting to a lot of you, but um, it's content and it, I've explained my reasons for what I've got and why I've got it. And if any of you take anything away from that, that's fine. It'd be great if you give the thumbs up to the video because that helps it um, in the listings. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next video. Hopefully not too far away, probably within the next couple of weeks. I'll probably go out somewhere. I haven't decided where yet. It depends what the weather's doing. Anyway, thanks very much for watching and we'll catch you on the next video very much for watching the video if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel and click the notification icon and the bell and you'll be able to be notified when i upload new videos